plant of Bisleri was where Ramesh Chauhan, its chairman, started work nearly four decades ago. Then, Vikroli, in suburban Mumbai, was the back of beyond. Chauhan was a young engineer who had graduated from MIT in the US with the likes of Adi Godrej in class. And bottled water was an unknown concept across the country. Today, everything has changed. The brands that Chauhan created and worked on through the 70s and 80s are either memories or legacies elsewhere and he's gone on to create a new one, Bisleri, which has managed to stay in a dominant position despite the many players across the bottled water segment. In fact, it's a testimony to the confidence of Bisleri that five years ago the brand decided to go into uncharted territory and go green. A decision that Chauhan claims was a turning point because it made Bisleri stand out from the big competitors. We came with a brilliant idea about five years ago seeing that everybody is in blue, so change to green. The ad agency came up with the idea of changing the blue to green. And I said, you are out of your mind. We have spent 30 years, 40 years uh, uh, in blue. Huh? And now you think you go green. So we were sure that all the Me Too's will also go to green. That we were sure. But we were also sure that Aquafina and Kinle will not go green because international standard, international specification, they'll remain blue. So we will stand out ahead of Aquafina and Kinle in terms of the green. While brand expert Santosh Desai, who worked on the Kinle launch, doesn't quite see Bisleri's color change as anything more than a statement, he does lay out what he thinks has worked for Bisleri. Certainly, they became a large brand because of the fact that they, you know, got the, uh, you know, they were the first dominant beverage company at that time in India, which was the strongest uh, stable, you know, which was uh, Parley. And, uh, and so they had formidable distribution. They, they, I think the brand has been created uh, sensibly. Uh, historically, Parley has always, you know, supported it strongly with advertising and has done good advertising. So I think... Over, you know, it's it's once in a category like this, and it is such a trust-laden category that once you are able to establish that trust and and become virtually synonymous with the category, uh, you know, it becomes very difficult to displace uh, the dominant player simply because you have managed uh, to cement your place. And I think that biggest strength is the fact that at a time when they could have coasted and not invested in the brand because they were the dominant players they chose to invest in the brand. I think that really, that, that decision to invest in the brand and to, and to make efforts to cement a relationship with the consumers is what has paid off in the long run for them. But having created a brand in the mass drinking water category, the new challenge for Bisleri is to move beyond it. In 2010, the company launched the Vedika brand of mineral water and it has been a challenge. Because not only is the high-end fortified water segment a marginal market in India, it is also an area that needs a different dose of strategizing. That's a, it's, you know, it's always a little difficult to do that, to get into the premium uh, category uh, after being a, a sort of a mainstream brand. And uh, uh, because it, it calls for a, you know, because it is all about the brand, you know, you... you it becomes very difficult to be in the two places at the same time uh, and, and therefore I am a little circumspect about that effort that they are, uh, you know, of, of taking this brand and, and in, with, through whatever form trying to move into a more premium space. Uh, I think uh, that's going to be a challenging task for, for the brand and I'm not sure it is, uh, you know, the smartest thing to do. But having said this, Desai also believes that going up the value chain will be imperative for Bisleri to move ahead and to ensure that it stands out from the crowd in a market that is crowded and a category that offers little differentiation. The challenges uh, for uh, Bisleri are always going to be from the fact that uh, if you have a, more, a credible mainstream offering uh, which uh, uh, is able to s somehow, you know, sort of change the game or offer a, offer a proposition or, or latch on to an emerging idea. Uh, uh, you know, those are the kind of things that can challenge uh, uh, Bisleri. But otherwise, I think it is, it is in a strong position. But as it tries this, what you can't deny is that Bisleri has come a long way. 
from being a small time soda company in Heartland, India to a company that sells almost 700 crores worth of bottled water each year. And it has seen a lot from being something that only visiting tourists ask for to something that is synonymous with clean bottled water throughout India. The sweet taste of purity. So how does the man behind some of the most memorable drinks in the Indian market see the water business? And can it be as big as a cola given that it is tasteless? We've got to distinguish taste and brand. Brand, hammer, 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 hammer. It's like this, when you drink beer, the first time you drink beer, I'm sure you spit the thing out. It's god awful. Now, over a period of time, you get uh, to like the taste. But the product is terrible. It's the brand which is driving you forward. Last question. Can you say the same thing about water? After all, it doesn't have any taste. And water you put is, a brand. Water is water. <laughs> and you put a brand to it. Correct. So, then is that, is that what it is all about? The brand? Correct. It is. And this is what I'm sending an email which I received from Goa to my friend in Delhi our manager, who wants to make some changes in the water because the difference in taste. I says there is no such thing like difference in taste. It's packaging, it's brand name, it's distribution. These are the key. And that's been the key for Bisteri success. Embrace. The sweet taste of purity.